Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree hostess gift. We're going to make a give thanks tag. And I'd like to thank my cousin Mary for inspiring me with this wonderful tag she had on her porch. Hers is made out of wood, um, but obviously we're going to make ours out of some Dollar Tree tags. And I'm going to use a bunch of scraps. We're going to use a small piece of foam board, a little piece of... Uh, of rope and then we're gonna use a couple of the tongue depressor size popsicle sticks um, but first what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Noel section off this tag don't try to break it just go gently you can use a butter knife if you don't have a little screwdriver like this but you just want to pry it up it's also on a piece of chipboard uh, covered in ca uh, cardboard as well but we don't have to worry about that just yet okay let's uh, first we're just gonna peel off uh, the the paper on the back. Now originally you see the bowl of water there. I tried to peel off like I normally do and like soak it and wash it and everything but this paper for some reason was really stuck and of course I just bought a case of these. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to get any of the paper off but we can still DIY with it. But the reason I'm taking that initial shiny paper off is because it has glitter on it and we're going to glue stuff to the back and when you glue stuff to the paper with glitter it tends to have more of a chance of coming off. Um, I find that anyway. Um, but what we're going to do is uh, we're going to basically scratch away uh, the corners miraculously we'll turn them over and the stickers will disappear <laughs> but we're going to scratch away the corners there of all of that cardboard paper it's weird to say cardboard paper but I don't know how else to describe it but what we're going to do is we're just going to expose just the chipboard just in the corners because I want to make sure that I glue those popsicle sticks directly to the chipboard it's okay if they're also glued to the cardboard but I want to make sure that at least some of it is glued to the chipboard okay and of course you guys know I always use Gorilla hot glue sticks but you can use whatever glue that you think will hold um, if you want to use just hot glue and these popsicle sticks probably will be enough but um, it's pretty much my exclusive hot glue at this point um, but I did do a small bead around I mean just on the edge before I smashed them together made sure they're lined up um, and I did it on a cutting mat, uh, excuse me, like a, yeah, like a cutting board thing that I used because I wanted to be able to peel it off. Took some sandpaper, just sanded off whatever glue remnants were left over. And then I added one popsicle stick to each edge and one in the middle. I did a lot of glue and I rolled it from the edge in so any glue that e oozed out would ooze out on the inside of the back as opposed to over the edge. Okay. Then I took the two Noel signs um, and I glued them to the edge to cover up that bottom half of that tag uh, just so it looked like it was square on one side. Plus it gives it a nice little finish almost like we did make it out of barn boards and we just stuck a little barn board down there to give a little thickness on the bottom. Um, I also had a third one because I told you I tried to clean off one um, that I was going to use for a stand but that's optional. This can lean against stuff if you want to or you can use any sort of scrap piece of material as long as it's firm enough to create a stand. I'll show you how I'll do that at the end. Um, and now I've just added a really good amount of ivory chalk paint. Another thing I didn't mention when we in the beginning, but I guess you guys figured we were going to need some paint. Um, but some ivory chalk paint. I did a really nice thin coat. I tried to go back over all of the glue seams, or they're not like glue seams, but the seams just to fill in a little bit. I kind of like the way that chalk paint's nice and thick, and it almost works like spackle. I really enjoy that. I didn't wait for the paint to get really dry, just a little dry. This is probably four, not even four minutes, probably just long enough for me to actually dig out the truffle paint from the bag that I took to Texas. Um, but I took the Waverly truffle paint. I wanted to create that ombre look, but I wanted to do it... Um, you know, I didn't want to create the wood look necessarily, but I really did like the ombre effect that the staining on her board created. So what I did was I started with straight truffle on the bottom, and I just blended it, blended it, blended it as I went up. Um, now, the more you blend into that white chalk paint, even though it was sort of dry, it still will lighten up your truffle. Now, there's lots of ways to do ombre effects if you mix four or five different variations like basically uh, use the same amount of white and add one two three four and five drops of paint to them you'll get different variations and then you can do different layers but I just really wanted to just do this 
I don't know, as if it was stain. You would do a lot of dark stain at the bottom and work your way up towards the top as it, the paint starts to fade from your brush, it lightens up as well. Um, it doesn't photograph exactly how it looks in real life, so I am sorry about that, but I do love it. It does, mine does have texture because you can definitely tell it's an ombre, it's a painted ombre, not a stain. Um, but I just love it. And I just went back and forth um, with truffle up to here, then ivory down to here, and then blended them and blended them back and forth. And I did this for about 15 minutes just to get the actual look that I want. But again, if you just want to like do it quick and easy, that's how you would really do it is pick out five or six variations of that color going from your lightest to your darkest and then paint into sections. And then once you get the sections painted, you can blend the section seams. Um, we can do that again if you guys are interested. Just let me know in the comments down below if you want to see a different uh, ombre tutorial with that technique, okay? But I just love this idea of just, it made me just feel like an artist. It's been a real long time since I just was able to like let myself go free and go. And um, I did. I, I love the foam brushes because they hold just so much paint. And then the more you push on them, the more paint comes out. And you're just back and forth and back and forth until you finally get... The look that you're after and it's oddly enough I thought I had the look I was after as it started to dry I started to notice the uh, a more contrast than I than I originally wanted so um, after I made the hole and everything in the top I went ahead and I added a little bit more paint but you'll see that in a minute um, then you can age your board if you want to you know if you want to add some aging now it does already have a hole, but I'm gonna make a bigger hole lower so it's more in proportion with the tag. And what I just did was took a, a lid to a jar and put it underneath it just to elevate it. So that I took my screwdriver and just screwed in underneath the original hole just to make a hole you know, big enough to put the rope through. And again, you want it proportioned to the tag size. So I worked first my screwdriver, then my small scissor, then my medium scissor, then my large scissor. <laughs> And then once I had them all basically drilled through, um, you guys know we've done tools on our channel before. So if you want to pull out your spade bit or your paddle bit or whatever you want to call it and go ahead and create your hole, then absolutely go right ahead. But I also like to show you and the people without tools that there's other ways to do it. I wanted to do this while the paint was sort of still wet because it actually softens the chipboard a little bit, which makes it a little easier. Um, and it wasn't so wet that it was coming off of my hands, but you could feel the moistness in the board okay and then once I did that I just had uh, flipped it over cleaned up the hole basically whatever was jutting up I uh, cut off but I wasn't so worried about making a perfect hole because we're gonna make that sort of you know how fancy tags have that little ring that goes around it we're just gonna take a tiny piece of foam core uh, poster board sorry um, I was a scrap that I had left over I took that's a mason jar one of those plastic mason jars from Dollar Tree I thought it was the perfect size circle just measure on the board as you can see that I did um, and then I cut out uh, with just a scissor I did take my sanding pa sandpaper and I actually like made a nice edge on it um, but first I went ahead and I cut a hole for the middle I found that that hole in the ribbon this is just a actually that's the orange jute that was like the perfect size hole so I just took my exacto knife and now exacto knives they have them at the Dollar Tree I was so excited um, but I just took my exacto knife and just worked it up and down this particular piece of scrap that I got had hot glue on the back what a mess um, but uh, obviously yours won't so you won't have as much trouble but I really didn't worry about it I just peeled it off the back because I don't need the back paper to be on there anyway um, as you can see there and then I just took uh, my sandpaper like I said and I cleaned off the edges and then I took the brown paint so I've only used two paints in this we're gonna use truffle and ivory and that's it um, I just took the edge of my paintbrush and the truffle and I went around the edge and the reason I just go around the edge and the inside edge is because I'm gonna glue it and then paint it because I'm trying to get this done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, just because I can. Um, the paint does dry really quickly, so I just took the edge of my brush, went around all of the edge of the tag tape. I don't know. It's, it's really like a reinforcer is really what it is, right? Um, and then I put a bunch of hot glue on the back, lined up the holes, um, and then I glued it down. And then I went ahead and I took my paintbrush again, and I just 
painted on the top of it. So that's just a shortcut. If you, you know, if you're impatient like me and you don't want to sit there all day and wait for paint to dry, yuck. Um, I just dabbed in the middle on whatever hole, like, you know, I didn't line it up. Basically, you just saw that, right? So it's okay. You won't notice it once the rope's in there anyway. So this is where I noticed that I just want a little bit more variation in the ivory to truffle ratio. Um, I just went back and forth just a few more times. Um, and, and chalk paint does dry so incredibly fast. It's, an, it's really, really scary how fast it dries. I also added another one stripe, uh, one coat to the bottom of straight truffle. I just wanted to let you guys know. It was kind of off camera because this board's really wide. Um, now I just took my pencil and I scripted the word give. Um, it's, it's a little bit different than the inspiration piece, but you guys, there's stencils out there. There's, you can do printables. We've done lots of different handwriting techniques on our channel. So um, go ahead and check out all of those videos. Um, but I'm just taking a flat paintbrush to create that um, calligraphy sort of pen feel. Uh, basically, it's a flat paintbrush and you want to hold it when you're doing calligraphy, you basically want to hold your pen slash paintbrush always in the exact same position um, in proportion to your to your paper. I know that, that sounds silly, but um, if I was holding my paper straight up and down, I would hold my paintbrush straight up and down, like straight across to perpendicular to the ground. Um, and then when I as you start to move it around whenever you go across, it'll create a thin line. Whenever you go up and down, it creates a thick line. That's how calligraphy works. And that's all that this is. Um, and now the inspiration piece, now that I look back at it, it's got such a prettier font that it was just a straight sort of Arial is the, is the font, the text when you're doing, you know, on the computer, it's just a nice Arial font, but I picked the times new Roman sort of situation. I added the little flourishes on the top and bottom. To me, that feels like it goes with the calligraphy a little bit better. Um, but you do you and whatever works, you know, um, if you want to use stickers or stencils or, uh, like I said, print something and transfer it, you know, print it off the computer and transfer it on there. Um, I th feel like the letters are each about three inches high. But again, if you decide to use like the other tags, your spacing will be different and how big you make your work give and how big you make your hole. All these things will determine whatever size you're finished with. So now the sign could be done, but I just wanted to add a stand. Um, like I said, this is the piece of like the Noel part that was left over from the first board that I tried to wash. Um, you could just use any sort of chipboard piece of scrap that you have left over. What I have here is just a scrap piece of ribbon. This is obviously left over from Halloween. It's about, I don't know, six inches long. And it's about two inches wide, which is the perfect width for this piece of board, obviously. Um, I just put a little piece at the top, and that's going to work like our hinge. And then I added a, the rest of the middle section. Um, and first we're going to do is we're going to attach it. What I did was before, as I don't know if you kind of could see me, it went really fast, that I did a couple of test runs where I actually leaned uh, the board up against this little scrap to see if it would stand by itself. It's not very heavy, so it will. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for outside because it isn't very heavy and it would probably blow away <laughs> if you had just a, like a short gust. Um, but if you had a covered porch, I'm sure it would be fine. It is chipboard, so any humidity or wetness will probably affect uh, whether it warps and stuff like that. Okay. So what I've just done is I've glued the other half of the hinge to the board, pressed it down, made sure I got glue the whole way. Any slack in the ribbon um, w could cause it to tear, so I want to make sure that you have no slack. And then what I did was I measured uh, how far I wanted it to kick out, uh, cut the ribbon down to match, added a little extra half inch of it to add to glue, and then I went ahead and I glued um, that tab down as well um, at the perfect distance that I wanted the, the stand to be. All of this is uh, not numbers written down because it's actually how your particular board will work and how you want it to stand. So this is it. I absolutely love it. Thank you to Mary um, Gaynor for putting this up on her <laughs> Instagram so that I could 
get inspired. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Um, let me know if you want to see a better ombre uh, tutorial. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video if you select all for notifications. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.